I want to be the guy that has freedom. So much for this dream middle class. And my mom keeps telling me, we're supposed to be grateful. My mom doesn't understand because she's like, you got a bike, you got a roof over your head, you got food every day, and I'm not satisfied. And so I'm starting to make decisions right now. I'm gonna get rich one day. Deciding what it is you want out of life. What is your life plan? What do you want your life to be is the most important thing you can decide on. An obsession is what people need to find success. I think they also need to have this constant and never-ending striving for improvement. I don't care who you are. I don't care how successful you are. You are going to doubt everything every step of the way. That is why faith is so important and literally the hardest one to master. What the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. For most people, what they do is exterior driven. It's, it's driven by what we think others think we should have. It's not what we think we should have. If you can develop the habit of deciding what you want to do and planning every step and then doing it, you're only going to get better and better at it and do it bigger and bigger and bigger. Things go real fast here, okay? Life is real short and you're gonna die early. And that was a moment where it's like, do you choose what others would deem a success? Or do you choose character? I chose from that point forward, I will always choose character over success. I've lived that way ever since. And the odd thing about it is, when you do that, success finds you. Because literally, that means every single step of the way, everything you do will be adding up to what that is. I want a great life. I'm going to become somebody. And if it takes you five years, 10 years, 20 years, and you will find energy in slowly moving towards it with the ultimate end in mind of what you want to achieve. And, and I think for most people, they are too consumed with their lives and the things around them and just surviving or getting by or uh, finding what the, uh, their reason for getting up the next day is and oh, do I want to do this job or so too much stress and pressure to even create a life plan in the first place. You know, I, I think most people don't even consider what they want out of life, especially when you're young, you know, and God forbid you are in your 20s. You can lay out a life plan and then pick something you want to master and how that connects to it. You are guaranteed success because that's going to give you energy that's going to create your desire. You're going to be persistent as long as you build a great plan and you're going to all these other aspects of what you need to achieve that are going to happen because that will turn into specialized knowledge that turns into like-minded individuals that become your mastermind alliance that, that ultimately lead to you achieving what you want to do in a much more direct and specific way. There's a lot of talk about passion, and I don't think a lot of the great entrepreneurs or great achievers in the world that necessarily are driven by just this idea of passion. I think passion is a misnomer where it's like they're always zealfully happy and in love with what they're doing all the time. I think a better word for it is they're obsessed. I read an article uh, recently about Mark Parker, the CEO of Nike, and it was a short article, but in the article he said the word obsessed 13 times. And I think that's what you will find if you look at the study of any, any extraordinary achiever. You know, Thomas Edison, was he passionate? Alexander Graham Bell, was he passionate or were they obsessed? And I've done a whole variety of things, a dozen different industries and unrelated industries. And each time uh, I would say that what drove me was an obsession, not a passion necessarily. I wasn't necessarily like joyful about the process all along the way, and I think that's the way people misunderstand passion. But I was certainly obsessed, obsessed about getting it to a point of excellence. I think an, an obsession is what people need to find success. I think they also need to have this constant and never-ending striving for improvement. They gave me a little pill and said, you need to take this little pill every day. I said, dude, I came here to get off pills, okay? And before I left, the counselor grabbed me and said, hey, if you don't give up your ideas of getting rich, because in 28 days you share your whole life, all your dreams, your goals, everything. They're trying to get to what happened. Give up all your ideas of writing books. Give up your ideas of, uh, of helping people all over the world. Just help the alcoholic and the drug addict and that'll be enough. Give up any ideas of being rich and famous, being free and financially wealthy. Give it up, okay? Because if you, you need to be satisfied with one thing, not using drugs every day. So I went home with my little pill, sat down that night, looked at that little pill on the little table that I had, and, and um, remember what that dude was telling me, give up all these ideas, looked at that pill. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna show this guy that I'm not powerless, I'm not unmanageable, I can control my life. 
I'm gonna get rich. And so if I could just stay busy, okay, if I could just have a place to work every day and something to do and somebody to call and somebody to be in front of, that, that was my big fear. My big fear was that little white pill, I threw those in the trash that night, never would use another one again. And I just made a decision that day not to quit, not to be powerless, not to be unmanageable, but to be somebody. And I've been doing that since I was 25. Every day waking up, today I'm gonna be somebody. I'm not just gonna think about it. I'm gonna be somebody today. I'm gonna grow into who I should be. Really, it's not even about landing that trick. You just really don't believe uh, that you were meant to be successful. After uh, all of that work on the subconscious and the auto-suggesting of, of saying it over and over uh, and then testing uh, now to where you know you're at a 10 of believing that you were meant to be successful my entire existence went on an insane trajectory I was just a mediocre pro skateboarder like half-ass entrepreneur up until that point and literally my entire life trajectory turned into this incredible success from that point on I am more than aware that I am built off these incredible successes at a very young age you know I had taken incredible risks my entire young life uh, that really gave me the confidence to fail. You know, where I built such a self-belief where even in failure I knew, well, okay, that, that, here's why that didn't go. I'm gonna do this now, you know, and, and I'm incredibly grateful for that because it's given me a chance to create and build a life much different than if it would have been based off of failure. I was in 11th grade and the bell had rung and I was quickly running out of class. It was AP English and I needed to get to baseball practice because that night we had a game. But the teacher stopped me and said, Darren, I need to speak with you, which is never good, right? So I certainly go up to her desk and she hands our latest essay to me. And it had a big fat red letter on it, way too far down in the alphabet to be any good. And as she handed it to me, she said, well, you know, uh, maybe success in writing is just not in your DNA, as if it had been decided, as if no matter what, I could never be good at writing. And then she said, well, I heard you hit a home run in baseball last week, you know, congratulations. And I, I know that she was trying to be helpful, but I was still stewing from the fact that she had said that I could never do this. She says, look, you're, you know, you're good at, you're good at other things, you know, like, like, like baseball, you know, maybe you should just you, you know, focus on those things that, that you're good at. And I wish that I could remember this teacher's name, but I had burned it from my cerebral matter long ago because I would love to send her a copy of my third book as a New York Times bestselling author. And it was almost because she said I couldn't that I probably to this day work so hard at trying to do so. And so I have to thank her one more time for giving me that fire in the belly to, to prove to her that maybe I could do this after all. I guess I think about this in the context of talking to my grandkids. If I had one piece of advice, and this was the last thing that I asked them to think about and to consider as they live their life, is not to be encumbered by what the world seems to be showing them. Listen to their heart. They know what they need to know in order to do and be what they need to do and be. They just need to quiet themselves in order to listen.